All right, people of God. So I'm going to drop uh, this, what I pray will be a quick word on you. I always giggle when I say that because I always say it and sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's not. So I'm going to drop this word on you. Um, and I pray that this word locates you and blesses you and just executes on everything that the Holy Ghost needs this word to do. So some time ago, um, the Lord had ministered Luke 18 to me, the story of the persistent widow. And for a long time, when I would read that, that passage of scripture, you know, I would be very keen on the persistence of the widow, right? I would be very keen on that part. Um, that's what would minister to me. And when the Holy Ghost brought the scripture to me a few weeks ago, you know, when I was reading it, there was a, there was a passage of scripture and I, when the Holy Ghost gives me a scripture, I will read it in different translations and people feel different ways about different translations. But there was one particular translation and that was the passion translation that there was this one word that, that kind of like, uh, stuck out to me. And even today in my time with the Lord, I was praying and the Holy Ghost dropped the word legality in my spirit. And so I looked up the word legality and I wish that I could tell you all the whole backdrop about how the Holy Ghost ministers to me through words and how he's verified to me a specific uh, thing around what I'm called to do. And I know I need to share that and at some point I will, but if you followed me, like when the Lord used to really give me um, monthly prophetic words, it would be like kind of uh, out of the box words sometimes. So anyway, I don't use the word legality in my normal life, right? So I started to look up the word legalities and one of the synonyms for legality is rights. Like that's one of it. And in the Passion Translation, when the story of the persistent widow um, is read, there is a passage of scripture that again stuck out, right? So if you don't know that story, it, it talks about the fact that there is this widow that goes to this judge who doesn't care about people, who doesn't care about God. And the Bible says that she keeps pleading with the judge, right? She keeps pleading with the judge. And the Passion Translation records her plea as grant me justice and protect me against my oppressor. That is her plea, right? So she's going to the unjust judge and she has that same plea over and over and over. Now, we don't know how long this widow goes to the judge. We don't know if it's days. We don't know if it's weeks. We don't know if it's months. We don't know if it's years, right? We do know that Jesus promises us that when we cry out to our, our judge, our just judge, that we will get a quicker response, right? But this is what the Passion Translation records as the unjust judge response to her plea. Okay, so this is verse four through five. He ignored her pleas for quite some time, but she kept asking. Eventually, he said to himself, this widow keeps annoying me, demanding her rights, demanding her rights. And I am tired of listening to her. So I, I'm just going to stop right there. So I'm thinking in my mind, right? What rights does she have, right? The Bible doesn't tell us what rights she has. Like the, like what rights, like what is the right? Like, like what is, was, was, was what was done to her illegal? Like what rights does she have, right? Like I keep thinking that in my natural carnal mind. And like I said, God had dropped this passage of scripture on me weeks ago. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost because mm, I do not know why I feel emotional. But let me tell you, oh, help me, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. This is what happens to us, right? The enemy convinces us that whatever situation you're in, in some type of way, you got yourself in this situation. This is your fault. This thing has a right to be here. You know, that sickness, that 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 thing attacking your marriage, it's generational or your husband, whatever. The enemy convinces us. And so then we start to wrestle with the right of that thing. Before we can even rem de demand for it to move, we struggle with the right of that thing. When I put that... Um, and I didn't expect it to get the response that it got. But when I posted, 
I guess for lack of better words, that meme in the community page, one of the comments that I just got and the person said, I really hope that you see this talked about, do you think that I've been sick for so long because this is my calling? Sickness is not of God. Sickness, what, what is your calling is the, is the oil and the anointing to rebuke that thing. The enemy would love for us to justify and give a right to whatever we're facing. Oh, well, I'm homeless because of this. I don't have money because of this. This is in my bloodline. Listen, listen, the enemy would love. He would love because when you validate it and you give it a right, you come into agreement with it. You come into agreement with it. When the doctor says, well, you have cancer because of this, right? I don't, let me tell you something, because then God put the book up, put Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because then, because of the finished work of the cross, because of the finished work of the cross, God put Philippians 2 in my spirit. God put Philippians 2 in my spirit. And Philippians 2 tells the story, right, of what the finished work of the cross does. And the Bible says that, is it Philippians 2? I'm trying to look at it in my Bible. Um, yes. And it is the example of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to, I'm going to just read this out. Like I said, I like to read different translations. So I'm just going to read it from the NIV because that's the one that I know the most. Um, but Philippians 2 tells us, it tells us what God has says, right? Like, like this is, this is what the Bible says. It says, it says, this is what it says. All right. I'm going to start at verse nine. Therefore, right? So it talks about why, why Jesus is where he is. It talks about the fact that he took on the nature of a servant, right? And that he became obedient to death, death on the cross, right? And so because of that, because of that, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Help me, Holy Ghost, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Listen, I say this all the time. If you've listened to me for any significant amount of time, I don't care what kind of spirit it is. I don't care if it's a Pharaoh, a Jezebel, a Goliath. I don't care if it's a water spirit. I don't care if it's a land spirit. I don't care if it's a generational spirit. I don't care what that thing is. I don't care, right? We are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Lord. And because of the work of the cross, that thing does not have a right. I don't care if it touched your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy. I don't care if the enemy said, well, you know what? You're going to be this way because you sin. Repent, dust yourself off and tell that thing at the name of Jesus, leave. I'm not fighting with no generational spirit. I'm not wrestling with no water spirit. I'm not dealing with no witchcraft at the name of Jesus. And just like, help me, Holy Ghost. And just like that widow, you keep talking to that unjust thing. You keep telling that thing at the name of Jesus. You are commanded to bow. You have to bow. You cannot. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is why sometimes I'm not on camera. Because, oh my gosh, when the Holy Ghost arrests me, you guys, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> oh, I'm like Jeremiah. You know, they call it the, in the Bible, Jeremiah was considered a weeping prophet. So I don't know why when my oil flows, I cry. But I, I want you guys to be free. Stop honoring your wilderness. Stop wrestling with this thing that says I have a right to be here. You do like that widow. You tell that thing, this is it. This is it. And at the name of Jesus, Noah, Noah, Stop hoping and wishing and, oh, well, I hope this is for me and I really want this to be my day. Listen, you command that sickness. You command that disease. You command that pain. You command everything that does not honor the will of God to leave and you don't let up. 
just like that widow. You don't let up. And Jesus promises us that we have a just God who hears us and who will answer us. So listen, Jesus has paid the price and there is nothing. I don't care if that thing says I got a right to be here. I have a right to be here. Will you? I have a right to be here. You can't expect for this marriage to work out. Look at how you, you started with him, right? You were in sin and whatever. Listen, repent. Get out the sin if you're in it. Dust yourself off and tell that thing at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Well, the cancer has a right to be here because you haven't been eating right or at the name of Jesus, leave. Well, the lack has a right to be here. At the name of Jesus, leave. At the name of Jesus, leave. Oh, you know, you don't have, at the name of Jesus, lead, that thing, demand your rights. Demand your rights that is given to you. The Bible says, listen, that things, listen, in heaven, respond to the name of Jesus. Tell your angels, come on, come, go get this thing. Go get my husband. Go get my, my health, whatever you need. The Bible promises us in Philippians 2 that things on earth, above the earth and under the earth respond to the name of Jesus. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. And um, I love you guys. God bless you. We ramping up because we're getting ready to go into this new year. And this old stuff, it's a wrap. Like it's over. It's over. Like it's, it's done. We're not playing with this stuff no more. We're not playing with this church doctrine that has us wrestling with generational spirits and stronghold and rejection and fear and all this. No, I'm not wrestling with this thing. I'm demanding my rights and I'm not letting up until my life looks like it goes well for me. That is the oil that is on this house. Life goes well for me. If it ain't looking like life going well for me, you got to get up out of here.